Okay, I think it's ready. Now, let's start from uh, this first slide. Uh, the background, you can see wind tunnel. So this is about wind tunnel testing. What we need is a wind tunnel. Okay, the one you see in the background is our wind tunnel. We developed this wind tunnel by the, the collaboration between AIT and Tamasa University. It is now the most active wind tunnel in Thailand now. Okay. Um, now let, let me begin by showing several examples about what we can do by using wind tunnel testing. Okay. Um, this is uh, an example of one type of structure. Uh, this type of structure is called large billboard. It will have a very large exposed area to wind. So the structure is highly vulnerable to wind load. In the past, many of them collapsed during severe wind storm, like this one under the thunderstorm many years ago. Yeah, but, but this is quite common. You can see almost in every cities and towns that uh, billboards are the structures that are quite vulnerable to wind load. Now here is an example of uh, wind tunnel testing. Okay. Um, you can see here the small model of, of wind tunnel uh, of, of a billboard. It's, it's a kind of a reduce a scale down with a scale of one to 100. So the size of the model is only about nearly 40 centimeter but it represents the real structure of 40 meter high. And we actually drill many holes to the front panel and the back panel and connect this hole with the pressure tube. So we can measure pressure at this location. The pressure tube is all connected to pressure sensor located down below the wind tunnel, okay? So by using this uh, kind of measurement technique, we can measure wind tunnel in the front and in the back simultaneously at many locations. This shows an example uh, of the result when you have a wind load, a wind direction normal to the panel. Sometimes the wind pressure is uniform. This is a sum of the pressure in the front and the back. But at some time instant, you may have a wind load, rather heavy load on one side, like, like this time it's heavy on the right hand side. Now it's become quite uniform. And in some next time instant, it may be heavy on the other side. Okay. So even the wind is normal to the panel, it creates the um, varying wind pressure with the time and sometimes it's non-uniform. And if you actually look at the building stand, uh, design standard or building control regulations, it may give you kind of um, wind load for the design. In some standard, they will provide you with a uniform wind pressure, equivalent static design pressure and it will create just the force at the center of the panel. But in reality, you may have a non-uniform pressure distribution, okay? And the force will be eccentric from the center and it gives a different effect to your structure. If you want to make sure that you can ensure the safety of the structure, you need to actually use the realistic wind load in your design. And wind tunnel testing can provide you this type of realistic wind pressure. All right. Uh, this is uh, another example. Um, it's a kind of um, a 40 meter tall Buddha statue located in Kanjanaburi. I'm sure that you cannot find wind load information from any standard or course 
the structure structural configuration is very unique buddha statue we can put the model of this statue in make it a scale down model and put into our wind tunnel we can put this statue on turntable where we can turn it around 360 degree so we can check the wind wind load for different wind attack angle all right uh, if you look at this picture it's a result you if you can see my mouse i think you can see the, the pointer right Okay, uh, this is Buddha statue. The force that is normal to the face of Buddha statue is called drag force. And we actually present it by drag coefficient C sub D, CD. The force is applied perpendicular, perpendicular to that is called side force and we present that by C sub L. Here in this plot, we plot C, C, CD and CL against wind attack angle. Wind attack angle is defined here, theta and theta may vary from zero to 360 degree. And you can see here the drag force represented by the mean, the maximum, the minimum. So we see upper bound, lower bound, and the average value. How it vary with the different wind attack angle. Similar goes for the side force, CL. So with, with this kind of detailed information about wind load, supply to structural engineer. We can apply this to our structural model, like uh, this uh, finite element model of a Buddha statue. Okay. When you combine with accurate wind loading with accurate structural model, we can have reliable uh, structural response analysis. We can compute the structural load in our element we call demand. We can compare the demand to capacity of each element. So we can find D over C ratio. Okay, so you can actually evaluate the safety of the structure. If some element have too, too high D over C ratio, then you can strengthen that element. Okay, that is uh, one possible application. Now, let me continue to the next example. This is an application to tall building. And this, in this application is a kind of twin towers in Cebu of Philippines, uh, located in a very complex geometry hill area. So we actually put the hill, the small hill into the wind tunnel all together with with the tower. So these two towers are very tall structure as you can see here, the, 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 the picture on the right. Okay. And the presence of one tower modify the wind load on the other. So they, they have an effect, what we call aerodynamic interference effect. You, you, the loading on one, one tower is is not something that you can take from the standard because there is a nearby tall tower, tower that modify the wind flow and modify the wind load on the other tower. So this show you the example of the test. This test is called high frequency force balance. We put a, a rather rigid and light model on top of dynamic force sensor. Dynamic force sensor is hidden inside the tunnel floor. We put this model on top of the sensor. So by this arrangement, we can measure the drag force, the side force, torsional force, overturning moment in X, in Y, various components of wind, wind induced force on the structure. And we can present it in form of force coefficient Okay, this is for the force in a direction of wind, we call CFY. From, from this information, from this type of test, we can actually estimate the right equivalent static force for this tower. And we can give this to structure engineer. 
and structural engineers can design the structural component for, uh, for safety design of the building. Okay, the, this equivalent static force, although it's static force, it already account for dynamic effect like uh, resonance and other. Moreover, from this type of test, you can have uh, information about dynamic wind load that you can actually calculate the lateral sway motion of the structure. You can estimate the level of flow acceleration on the top. If it's too high, it's going to create a problem to building occupants. So we can prepare for that, or we can suppress it by some structural measure or some adding dampers. Uh, there's another type of test for the tall building. We call pressure measurement. Okay. Here again, in a model, we drill many holes into the models. We connect this hole to the pressure tube. The pressure, pressure tube looks like this. The pressure tube is connected to pressure sensor located below the wind tunnel floor. So we have 448 pressure tap or pressure hole to measure the pressure distribution, wind pressure distribution on the surface of the building. This is a result after we test for various wind attack angle. We can summarize the data and we can determine the level of positive wind pressure, maximum wind pressure to the cladding. Positive pressure means pushing force from outside to the inner part of the building, pushing pressure. Or we can find the negative pressure means pulling force from inside, pulling towards, um, no, I mean, pulling from outside, okay? So you, can, you have both pushing force, positive pressure and pulling force. And this is very important information for the design of cladding and the structure that support the cladding, okay? There's another type of test for tall building. You may sometimes want to use the pedestrian level area for many use, for recreation purpose, for open air restaurant, for many purpose. We can actually check the effect of wind on the pedestrian level by install this kind of Irwin probe, or it's a kind of small sensor to detect the local wind velocity. Okay, here or there. And after we conduct the measurement, we will compare the value of wind velocity that we measure with the criteria, okay, the standard. If uh, it is low, then you can use that location for many purpose, for long period sit sitting, for many others. But if it's too high, it will be uncomfort uncomfortable, okay? So you can actually evaluate the use of that area from this kind of measurement. And here is an example. We found that some area will be too windy. The wind speed is too high and it's not, you cannot be used for any other purpose. For example, in this, it's, it's just this location between the towers. The wind will be squeezed into that channel and the velocity can be very high. Of, of, of course, by, by this test, you will know before the building is constructed. So you can modify the geometry of the building. You can put the trees, you can put some wind shield. You can actually modify the wind flow we can test again and make sure that the wind velocity will be in acceptable level. And you can use that area for your plan. Okay. Now I change the subject to not the building, but to bridge. This is a famous uh, case, Takoma Narrow Bridge. It's a, sus a suspension bridge 
built in 1940. And you can see from this picture, the bridge is twisting under the wind load. Okay, it actually have a problem we call aerodynamic instability. I show you an example, uh, the, the video. I can find in YouTube. Okay, you, you see this is a motion picture taken from the real structure in 1940. The structure is actually twisting. It's a dynamic instability. And af after it continues for one hour, the bridge collapsed. Well, um, if you conduct wind tunnel tests, you can actually simulate this kind of aerodynamic instability. You can check your bridge girder whether it is stable under the wind or it's unstable. Okay. This is an example. This is a, a kind of a section of the, the long span bridge. And we put this model, hang it by spring outside to simulate the vertical stiffness and torsional stiffness. We add the mass to simulate the mass. We put uh, some damping damper to simulate its energy dissipation. So basically, it's a, just a part of the long span bridge, but it can simulate the entire bridge behavior. Okay, it's a rush mill bridge in Vietnam. This show example. Okay. How we test. Before I inside the, the tunnel, uh, my students, you see the bridge develop uh, unstable okay. oscillator. Okay, okay. Uh, in 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 reality, we will not let them go inside the wind tunnel. Okay, but this is just a demonstration and they want to feel the wind. So this for fun. So they can see the model by the eye. They can see how it's developed the oscillation. It's, it's good to have a wind tunnel inside in as a, our facility. So we can study the details of the wind effect on the structure. Uh, this is a more recent project. The team conducted the test for Lucas cable stair bridge in Philippines. I'm not sure I'm pronounced correctly or not, but there's a, a similar concept. Okay, you can check aerodynamic stability by this type of test. Here is another example. Uh, it's a kind of a 84 meter span dome. It's a Hmong bowl shape put in the wind, wind tunnel. And this is how the model looks like. The model is small. The real structure is large and it have a complex space truss structure inside for carry this the weight of the dome and uh, go ca carry the load from the wind. So in the dome, in the model, we actually drill many holes and make them pressure tap. We connect them to pressure tube. We can measure the, the pressure distribution like this one. In this picture, the wind is coming from the base, from the bottom to the north, okay? And it's actually produced positive pressure in the front. It produced negative pressure on the top of the dome and pressure is fluctuating all the time, okay? And we have this information from internal tests. We can record all this time history of pressure fluctuation. You know, based on this, we can apply all these pressure, dynamic pressure loads to the finite element program of the dome. Like, like it's shown in this picture. You can apply the pressure load apply all over the, the surface of the structure. And you can use your computer program, computer model to calculate the bending moment shear, uplift force, axial load, or anything in your structural component. You can actually design your structure to make sure that the demand will not exceed capacity. So this is a new way for the wind resistant design. You have more detailed information about wind load 
if we are realistic in law. Uh, I'm going to show just a few more slides. This is a more recent project. The AAP solution team, uh, they have a, we have a team to conduct internal tests at AAP solution. And they are now having many projects. They are, this is one of the projects they have. It's a kind of a 100 meter tall irregular shaped building. They call Museum of Architecture. The structure is very unique. <laughs> I have never seen anything, uh, anything like this. So we can actually check the total wind effect on this structure. Here's another example. We have a tower here, the gray color, dark gray, surrounded by the white building. This is an existing configuration now. But in the future, there will be more buildings around. So we can actually check the wind load under existing condition. All the wind load in the future, when uh, modify surrounding condition change. OK. So this is all example that I can present. And the purpose is just to warm you up. And we can start. We can have a proper discussion now. You can, yeah, I think I, I like to end my, my talk. Mm -hmm. Save and I stop share. Okay, now we're back to the normal. And okay. let's start the forum discussion. Yes, sir, we have a few questions rolling in already, so I'll share my screen. Uh, as I mentioned, I think we have just about 40 something people. So if you like to ask a question directly, you can do that. Or you can write into the chat box and Abhishek will put on his uh, PowerPoint slide and we can discuss that. Uh, can you see my screen, sir? Yeah, I can see. Okay, so one of the questions we received is, uh, uh, how sensitive is the scale of the wind tunnel model? To the results obtained from the wind tunnel testing, is there an advantage using a higher scale model? Um, actually, it will be the best if we can test the full scale. But in in practical sense, it's not possible. So we have to go with one to fifty, or one to hundred, and sometimes one to three hundred scale model. OK, so normally the result will be, um, will be quite accurate if we test the, the building with um, sharp edge. OK, but we call this rough body. Because the wind flow around this uh, the structure with sharp edge, it will be quite insensitive to the size or the scale. But if we test the kind of a structure with round shape, okay, the result will be sensitive to Raynaud number. In that that case, the scale scale ratio will be quite important. Uh, fortunately, most of the buildings we encounter uh, belongs to the first category. We call bluff body. So I think the scale is not a big problem. Uh, Next question the audience would like to know is uh, how much does a wind tunnel testing cost? And uh, when do you recommend to use wind tunnel testing? Uh, okay. The cost, maybe Abhishek, you can tell. Okay. Uh, and yes. uh, when do you need to use it? Is when uh, we cannot rely on the wind load provided by the code. The wind load provided by the code for example, for tall buildings, is for the case where there are no nearby tall buildings around. Okay, or when the building is in a normal shape, like a rectangular, circular, or square shape. But you are, if your building is kind of a, a unique configuration, unique configuration, unique shape, 
better to conduct internal tests. And if you are, your building is surrounded by many other buildings that may modify the wind flow, you, you need to do internal tests. When you are dealing with a new structure, which you are not sure about the wind load, and you cannot have a good guidance from your structural code, this is a time that you need to do internal tests. Okay. The cost, Abhishek? So yeah. the cost will vary depending on the services you would want. So if you want, uh, what we provide is structural wind load testing, cladding measurement study, and also pedestrian wind study. So depend on the services you would want, uh, the cost will vary on that and the type of project. So it may vary from uh, $25,000 to $50,000. So it's like we, we, we can, Depends on the project and the services you would be expecting from us, basically. Yeah. Yeah. If you are not sure, you just check with Abhishek or the yeah. solution team. You and they will provide you a number. Yeah. Don't like the number, you can just leave it. Okay. But basically, this is just information for engineers. Structural engineers will design the structure with more confidence if they have more accurate information about wind loading. Okay, and I think engineers need to convince the client to pay, not you to pay. So another question is like, uh, I would like to ask a question regarding tall buildings deflection. What if the non-conventional skyscrapers such as uh, convex or a twisted tall buildings shows higher deflection when compared to a conventional skyscraper due to wind load. Is it good or bad? Oh, oh wow. So yeah. a non-conventional skyscraper shows higher deflection. Convex or twisted? I'm not sure. I, actually, there are many uh, the question is about deflection. Yeah. Uh, deflection you have to define is a the mean deflection or maximum de deflection. I think mm -hmm. it's in maximum deflection because that means you combine the average deflection plus the fluctuating deflection by dynamic wind effect. Mm -hmm. And sometimes some configuration you have more effect, like a more deflection, more shear load, more bending moment by the geometry of the building. Now, I, I cannot tell before the test which one is going to create more problem. But if you have many design options, we can test many options. And you can select the best option you like. Sometimes you can modify the geometry of the structure at some critical location, like the edge of the, 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 the cross section, or you make some kind of opening in your building, like a, the area that you can allow the wind to go through. This can modify the wind load or wind effect a lot. So it's a kind of, it's a, lot, it's a, it's a tool for you to actually uh, change the, the design so that you have a better wind effect. Okay. So the next uh, question. I, 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 I think for those who ask this question, if you don't like the answer, you can interrupt and ask question by yourself. If the answer is not clear, please, please okay. join the discussion. Yes. You, you are allowed to actually freely talk. Yeah. Okay. So please let me know if you her answer has been answered, Mr. Mohammed. So, so okay. you, you can use the uh, reaction panel. Huh? You can actually put um, raise your hand huh? like this, hmm. and and then we can just Jake can let you ask. Uh, um, may I ask the next question myself? Actually, I had written it in the chat box, but if you allow, I would. Sure, sure, ma'am. Please. 
Okay, let me open the window. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, good afternoon. Um, so I wanted to ask about that uh, tune mass damper, which you showed in your earlier presentation, which is developed by AID and which occupy very lesser space. So I wanted to ask if it is, you know, up for commercial use, because, uh, you know, uh, there is a, a wind tunnel test, which we got done by AIT and uh, the report has suggested to use dampers uh, mm -hmm. for our building. And uh, that will be, you know, uh, it's of course, it's a new thing for us here because in Pakistan, uh, we have not used any dampers in the buildings here ever. So we would like to see how, what cost we are looking at and um, if uh, it has to be designed, custom designed for the building configuration and accelerations related to our building. Like if we need uh, uh, suggested damping is uh, needed to be increased from 1.5 to 2.5%. So would it be customized? And um, what cost really do we look at if we uh, think about, uh, if we go for adding a damper into our building? Okay. Uh, my quick answer is the cost, we don't know. We don't know yet. But I'm sure that it will be, it, the cost will be lower than other option you may have. Okay, because okay. it will, it will be the cost of the mass and the cost of the base um, kind of bearing, which is not expensive. And you can actually save the space of your tall building. You can have a large damper installed in your, in your building with a limited space. I think it will be a very competitive option. Okay. okay. So um, and, and, and it has to be customized design. All right. So is AIT doing this uh, thing yeah, that can you can we, do we it? Can help you. I think it's not just the design. Once we design and you actually implemented this, you install this one, we need a proper tuning. Yes. Okay. The tuning procedure requires some uh, background knowledge. So okay. we, we can when we can help you through through all this because we have done a certain research work on this one. All right. So this is one thing. And um, how much time do you think uh, if uh, AIT is contacted for this to study the model and propose some damper design? Uh, what time would be needed for the design and system? Uh, <laughs> this is. Uh, the, the answer will be specific to your case. So okay. we, we have to look into the details. All right, all right, we can uh, share. But, but at the end, you can compare with this uh, option, TMD with, uh, how say, multi-stage rubber bearing with other option that you may consider. If the cost is competitive, cost is better, I think you can, you, you will, will be interested in this option. Okay, and there was one more thing which we discussed with the wind tunnel team also, and I would like to ask you uh, because I uh, naturally when dampers were suggested to be added in the building, it's a 150 meter tall building. So mm -hmm. we were not really expecting that wind would govern, but the floor accelerations for one year return period are, you know, exceeding the limits. So uh, we have not accounted for the overhead water tanks, which are already, you know, placed in the building at mid height and the top. So uh, we were wondering if uh, that effect can also be accounted for uh, having water tanks in the building. Oh, water tank. Okay. You, you mean the water in a water tank will work as sloshing damper or two yeah. liquid damper? Yes. Uh, I think, no, you, you may not be able to account that count that effect so much because um, to make the sloshing water in water tank work as a liquid damper, 
it need to have some level of energy dissipation. Yeah. If you have a big tank and only water in it, yeah. the energy dissipation will be too low to make it work as a damper. Okay. So you need to have a kind of a wide mesh screen inside the tank. You have to adjust the tank size and the depth so that the frequency will be, the flushing frequency will be tuned to the building frequency. A lot of work is need to be done to make that it work. If you just have the water tank, it may not work. It most likely it will not work as a damper. Okay. Okay. And so just one more question from my side and I'll leave it to the other audience. Um, when we uh, mention when we come for wind tunnel testing, so we provide a basic wind speed as uh, you know mentioned in our local code. Uh, but uh, does wind tunnel uh, team, they verify that or correlate that data provided to them by a local region with the available global weather data? And would they suggest some changes if they find any like the wind speed provided might be low or is it checked by the team? Abhishek, can you tell? Uh Ma'am, yes, ma'am. Uh, so we do check the basic wind speed. And also the thing is uh, the, the basic wind speed provided by the code is like a constant wind speed in all direction. So for a particular site, any project, so we get the weather data from the weather station from the nearby airport because the nearby airport would be the best option to get because it's open terrain and there won't be much interference to get the wind data and then we do the statistical analysis and get the directionality effect and use the basic wind speed to be compatible with the so we use the directionality effect of our statistical analysis got from the weather station and then we use the wind speeds of the code to be compatible with the code okay so does it mean that if i'm mentioning some speed and if uh, it is you know erroneous just in case. Uh, yeah, I think so to, to, to make it simple, I think the team can check the design wind speed in your code by looking at the local meteorological record data. Okay. And they can see whether the number is reasonable or not. If the number is not reasonable, they may, may recommend you a better number, better wind speed for, for the design. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask. But, Thank but, you. But I think in your country, when you design follow some standard, you are not allowed to design for lower design wind speed provided in standard. So yeah, not lower but higher. It could higher. be higher yeah. if the the standard is too low, and the real data indicate higher wind speed, then you should use a higher number in your design. Because the ultimate goal is you want to concern about the real safety and real serviceability, not just to follow the standard. Correct. Thank you. Thank you for your questions, Ms. Hada. So another question from the audience, sir, uh, is like uh, for structural wind load testing, which, uh, which technique is better, HFPI or HFFB? Well, if, um, I don't know, Abhishek, we actually run these two together and it gives more or less almost the same answer. Yeah, both right. the techniques are uh, quite accurate to each other. So each of the technique have, has its own uh, drawbacks, such as like for a, a HFPI test, uh, if the building has a complex geometry, we need to be capturing from every corner the pressure. So, and for the whole, whole building, we might not have enough pressure taps mm -hmm. as we have to test it uh, at the same time for the complete building. So that's when we choose HFFP test. So depends, like both the techniques are quite uh, accurate and can give, uh, depending on the shape of the building, we can choose whichever test technique we can think is best. Okay, uh, just to add to Abhishek, I think to have an accurate description of wind load around the surface of the 
tall building, for example, you need to have a pressure tap around 400 to 500 tap. Uh, at the moment, we can do around 280 tap, but it also provides quite accurate result. In the future, we will expand the capability of HFPI to around that level soon. But for, for the time being, the high frequency force balance test is quite accurate to determine overall wind load. So we, we normally do these two together. Yeah, so uh, the next question is, uh, does the wind tunnel result also give suggestions on where to locate outriggers or dampers? Um, <laughs> Is the wind tunnel test can suggest that you need damper or not? Yeah. Okay. Wind tunnel test may suggest that you need to strengthen or stiffening your structure or not. But how, where to locate your outrigger, where to put your damper, is up to the decision of structure engineer who designed the building. But the damper normally you should put near the top or on the top of the building. The outrigger is up to you, um, uh, depending on the structural detail. Uh, so the next question asked in the audience was, uh, how do we make sure that the results from the wind tunnel testing is uh, correct? Uh. <laughs> so we follow the guidelines provided in AFP and the Australian code of uh, quality assurance regarding the wind tunnel testing. And also we compare after the testing is done, we also compare with the code results, what the code predicts. So that's how we know, we follow the guidelines, even there are guidelines for internal testing. Well, actually all these guidelines are based on the past study. The past study actually compare internal test result with the full scale measurement result, okay, full building full-scale building measurement result, and they found that uh, measurement in a real building is close to what they measure in scale model in wind tunnel. So they develop this guide guideline and we follow this guideline. Okay, that's, that's the idea. Uh, I think the discussion become more like question and answer. Yeah. It will be more fun if you actually ask the question directly, like the previous lady. Yeah. Okay. If if you have, then you just raise your hand, and you just ask the question. Otherwise, we continue with question and answer. Oh, we have Dave. Yes, Go sir. <laughs> sir, uh, thank you. Good afternoon, sir. As you may know, my research here in Japan is about viscoelastic damper, and ah. considering long duration loading such as wind. So in my research, I consider the decrease of the dynamic properties of BE damper due to significant increase of damper temperatures. So that is about self-heating. So I had been aware of the TMD de developed by your team because I know Nung Prook. I, I, was I was already talking about him when he was still a student in AIT. So mm -hmm. I wish to ask if the TMD has significant performance decrement if under long duration loading. Thank you. Uh... Actually, we have not tested that yet. Okay. Hi. Okay. We could test under certain duration, but so far, is it does not develop high high temperature. But there is a possibility, sir. Like I mean, uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm not so aware about it, rubber bearing. If it's a chicken more than hours, it may develop some high higher temperature. Ah. Okay. Okay. It may actually modify the property. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. that's that's what you have. <laughs> but but you, I think for, for your case, you are talk about viscose damper or oil damper. Uh viscoelastic because viscoelastic. Uh, that that kind of um damper actually dissipate energy by its own kind of material property. Yes, so sir. Uh the heat being generated. generated is transferred to the steel and then it's being dissipated to the air. So somehow it gives a good uh, stability, mm. but of course the decrement 
is very important because I found that in some uh, scenario, there would be like 90% decrease of dynamic property. Mm. So that is very significant, especially for the long duration. But I, I don't know about the TMD. I, I guess the effect will be much, much less. Ah, okay, sir. Will be much less. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. Hope you are well. <laughs> mm. Okay, there. Any other participant want, want to talk and discuss? You can just raise your hand. Otherwise, we continue with the question and answer. I think I will just uh, answer one question from the chat box. So let's wait for if anybody raises their hand until then. So for uh, a warehouse structure, can we test with HFPI method only or HFFP is also possible? For a warehouse? Warehouse, I think it's it's better to test by HFPI. HFPI. Yeah, because uh, I think you may have high load on the roof and or on the side panel. And you may want to know the details of this loading. HFPI will provide you more detailed picture about the loading on each panel. I think in that case, HFPI will be better. Mm. Okay. Are there any more? But uh, I think it's already, what, 140, 149? Yeah. We see the time limit. Is so, there any question, question now? Yeah, we will finish off with this last question, sir, in the from the chat box. So another question was, uh, does the nat uh, does the fundamental frequency of the model used in the testing affect the result, or only its geometry, shape, and the surrounding buildings shape effect? Uh, we we have uh, many different types of scale model, but uh, for tall building, we use a rigid model. We mean that the model that the, the structure does not deform significantly under wind load. So the natural frequency is, is not a parameter of the model. Mm. We can, but in some case, when the buildings become extremely tall, like a 500 meter tall, 600 meter tall, the deformation of the, the building may be significant. And you have to create a different type of model we call alloelastic model. In that case, we have to model properly the dynamic property like a natural fundamental fundamental frequency of, of, of the model. We have to, to, to make such a model in some special case. But for tall buildings of around less than 300 meters, I think we can use rigid model with a reasonable accuracy. Okay. For long span bridge, like a, to check the torsional flutter, we also have to simulate uh, vertical frequency, torsional frequency properly. It's very important, not only geometry. Okay, I think, I think uh, we can conclude. Cover, uh, cover almost all the questions. Yeah.